Now, let us try and understand the detailed pathological process of the cerebral palsy. This process varies between pre- and post-term infants. In pre-term infants, the cerebral palsy occur as a result of intraventricular hemorrhage and paraventricular leukomalacia. The intraventricular hemorrhage results in bleeding in the subpendymal matrix, which passes on to the ventricles of the brain. Now, this further increases the risk of cerebral palsy. Intraventricular hemorrhage is also a risk factor for paraventricular leukomalacia. Increased severity of IVH also results in ischemia or hypoxia. This results in reduced cerebral perfusion that damages the white matter in paraventricular area, which ultimately results in paraventricular leukomalacia. Infections or inflammation may also trigger cerebral palsy. The microglial cells are activated during an infection and the free radicals are released, causing an oxidative damage. These microglial cells also damages the oligodendrocytes, a specific type of brain cells. The intraventricular infections activate the fetal immune system and the cytokines are released, stimulating the inflammation process. Let us look at the same condition in term infants. In term infants, the ischemic and hemorrhagic injuries damages the watershed region the area where three major cerebral arteries end in cortex. The watershed region is the common area of injury in the term infants. This results in underdevelopment of white matter, predisposing premature brain to cerebral palsy. Once the disease sets in, it affects the individual in two different mechanisms, either by inhibition of the lower motor neurons or by loss of connection to lower motor neurons. Let us discuss each of these mechanisms in detail. Initially, by the loss of inhibition of lower motor neurons, positive features of upper motor neuron syndrome sets in. This causes spasticity, hyperreflexia, clonus, and co-contraction. This is a neurological mechanism which ultimately leads to musculoskeletal pathology, causing degenerative arthritis. Next, by the loss of connections to lower motor neuron, leads to negative features of upper motor neuron syndrome. This results in weakness, fatigability, poor balance and sensory deficits, which may result in the mechanical disruption of musculoskeletal physiology, thereby causing muscle shortening and a series of events which ultimately sets in degenerative arthritis. The schematic representation clearly explains the pathophysiology of cerebral palsy. Please take your time to study it carefully. Let us now understand how the patient with cerebral palsy present with the clinical features. The symptoms begin in the infancy itself, and there is delay in achieving milestones. Stiff or floppy posture and poor head control is observed during the first three months. Excessive lethargy and irritability, high-pitched cry, and abnormal prolonged primitive reflexes are also observed in cerebral palsy patients during infancy. There is lack of normal developmental milestones. A normal child can lift the head by one and a half months, able to sit, and can reach out with hands by six months, able to walk by 12 months. All these milestones are grossly delayed in children with cerebral palsy. There is persistent of normal neonatal reflexes like grasping reflex, etc. If the child is held upright, there is scissoring of legs. Head drops back if not supported. Abnormal developmental patterns are observed after one year birth. W sitting is observed in the child with flexed knees and rotated legs. Behavioral abnormalities like inability to concentrate, unusual tenseness, and irritability are observed. Walking on tiptoe or hopping also observed. Let us look at other symptoms associated with cerebral palsy. These symptoms include hearing and visual impairment, sensory integration difficulties, failure to thrive in feeding problems, behavioral and emotional difficulties, bowel and bladder incontinence, skeletal deformities, mental retardation and learning disabilities, epilepsy. Now let us look at the complications involved with cerebral palsy. Children with cerebral palsy are always exposed to certain complications like muscle shortening or contractures. This may inhibit the bone growth and result in joint deformities or dislocation. 
The children with cerebral palsy also present with malnutrition as they have feeding and swallowing problems and hence do not get enough nutritional support. The patients also present with mental health conditions. These are mostly seen as autism in preterm infants. Most people develop depression and social isolation. The other health problems include heart and lung disorders. Patients with cerebral palsy may develop heart problems in future, and most patients also experience respiratory problems. Bony abnormalities like osteoarthritis and osteopenia. These are due to the pressure on the misaligned legs and muscles of the cerebral palsy individual.